man what is happening my youtube family of course it is your boy b new i'm coming at you on this wednesday and first and foremost as always want to send out positive vibrations and blessings to anybody who could be listening now with all that being said we all know that the los angeles lakers are still in the market for a top name free agent but before we can get into that as we can see lebron james has signed a two-year contract with the lakers and with that two-year contract many are thinking that he is instead of doing a three-year deal he did a two-year deal with a no trade clause that way by that time we know that is when bryce will be eligible to play who knows if lebron would want to do that but hey it ain't no fun if your homies can't have none and lebron might be thinking you know what if I play with Bronny, I can play with Bryce. <laughs> if I can do one for uh, one, I can do it for other. But maybe that's why he signed a two-year deal. Only because who knows how this experiment may work. Because of, there are a lot of naysayers and doubters of Bronny James. I'm not really one of him. them. I think he could be a productive NBA player. Nowhere near on the level of his father, of course. But with the right talent around him, the right encouragement, the right tutelage, then he could he definitely has the attributes to become a good NBA player. And who knows, maybe great. It just all depends because with JJ Reddick as the head coach, there's gonna be a lot more action in this offense. And I for one am looking forward to it because in the Darwin scam, I mean Darwin Ham offense, only thing you would really see mainly was coming down, finding pick and rolls, finding pin downs, uh just trying to play advantage basketball, where there's nothing wrong with that trying to have advantage basketball, but a lot of times that just left the ball in LeBron James' hands for maybe too long while you're trying to wait for plays to develop, while you're waiting for people, to, whether they're blitzing on some of these pick and rolls or whether they're dropping back, depending on what team you're facing and what kind of matchup you're facing. But at the end of the day, that didn't make the Lakers that great offensively, even though they didn't have, they finished maybe middle of the pack, I believe, uh, offensive uh, as far as points per game. But at the end of the day, with J.J. Reddick, you are going to see a lot more swinging and movement of the basketball that is going to be creating access for others and it's going to be creating uh, off-ball movement for LeBron James, who played pretty good off the ball last year. And, of course, LeBron, uh, a lot of people say he can't play off-ball, but I think he's proven that he can. Uh, he has been playing pretty decent off-ball when he hasn't had to dominate the ball. I feel like uh, J.J. Reddick will help Austin Reeves bring his game along. And then, of course, we have uh, the young rookie and connect. Got to see what he can do. Uh, he did play good down the stretch. Of course, he is a young player, so him and Brian as well. I don't expect to see them get a lot of playing time. I'm curious what's to happen with Max Christie because Max Christie, to me, I think is somebody who could be a great 3 and D player. He was showing that he could play defense on the defensive side of the floor, and he was very promising to me. I wish he would have got more playing time down the stretch of the playoffs when you had a lot of uh, unreliable players. But what's hurting the Lakers right now is everybody opted in, and everybody who opted in aren't necessarily good trade pieces. Cam Reddish has opted in, even though he's only getting $2.5 million. Uh, you know, uh, Jackson Hayes has opted in. Christian Wood has opted in. What kind of trade value do they have? Now your roster might be too full as you're trying to bring in somebody with a mid-level exception, such as a DeMar DeRozan. But at the end of the day, uh, we did get breaking news earlier. Uh, I believe that J.J. Reddick has hired, uh, the Lakers have hired two uh, top assistant coaches for J.J. Reddick's staff, and that of Nate McMillan and that of Scott Brooks. And we know Nate McMillan, a uh, more recent stint with the Hawks, I think he was like 90 and 80 overall when he got that four-year contract he did take them on the eastern conference finals run uh but yet nothing never materialized i for one would say he didn't just really have that much talent i know they added DeJounte murray uh you know that was a pretty good backcourt and you might think you would expect it more but nate mcmillan is one of those ones like i said the other day you have a coaching carousel they come back around like look at scott brooks i mean what he did with oklahoma city for seven years that was good, but he had great talent. What did he do when he got with the Wizards when he didn't have as much talent to work with? You can see that stint wasn't long because at the end of the day, but one good thing about it is J.J. Reddick having no head coaching experience now will have two assistant coaches on his staff who have been NBA head coaches. So that alone right there is something good because they can kind of take them through. There's so much that goes into it. It's not just about rotations. It's not just about motivating and leading men. It's more than that. Uh, it's about all the small, integral things that go along with it.
as if you've never done something and you're stepping right into it. I don't care how close you've been to the game. And we all know Jay, Jay Reddick is a 15-year veteran of the NBA, so he has spent a lot of time in the league. But now it's time for you know the Lakers to make some moves because we know currently the way they are constructed, uh, they probably wouldn't make it past the first or second round again. I, for one, think the Lakers blew the season last year after the play-in tournament. They were playing really well. They did get the injury bug, of course, with Vanderbilt. I think if Vanderbilt plays in that Denver series that the Lakers walk away with their victory, we know they led for more than 60% of that series, but that's something that J.J. Reddick wants to take a look at, too, like all the small things that leads to victories, and that's something that we're going to be talking about. Of course, uh, I think the Lakers summer camp is going to be coming up. Of course, we got the Olympics. This season is going to be very good, very interesting to say the least. So we'll be talking about plenty of things to come this summer. But if you haven't done so already, hit that like, hit that share, hit that subscribe. And as always, this is your boy B. New. I'm saying right on to the real and much love to these haters.